She's gonna use this as the silence part. Jake was making a shitload of noise. Take a look. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> It is impossible to get 15 seconds of silence with anyone of this group. (laughs) (laughs) You see me use the force there? (laughs) (laughs) Come on, man. Sit still, my boy, for I'm going to tell you a story that may very well save your life. Welcome back for the first time to a Two Whiskeys podcast. Yeah, you started it last time. I did start at the yeah, five times before that though. So if you want to take this one, you can. I'm Captain Eric. Yes, welcome back. He's Captain Eric. I am Scourge of the Seven Seas. I feel like I fall for that like every time. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you to be done talking, but here we are again. Anyway, I am Soul. I uh, also host of the Two Whiskeys podcast. Thanks for joining in. As you can see. We did not get enough hell yeahs last week, so Vorn is now a white woman. Hi. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what, did I, say, did I do something wrong? Uh-uh. How topical. How topical indeed. Yeah, unfortunately he actually couldn't make it. He had some personal business to attend to. Very understandable. But, so, here we are again. So this is our good friend Magdalena. Uh, Draco's girlfriend. Yes, who actually. actually has earned the right to be in front of the camera. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, yeah, Draco's here as well. Yes, of course. <laughs> Proud of him. He's in the background. Again. Uh, obviously to give us shots. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank <Bastards>. you. <laughs> Our rum of choice today is the same as it's always been. Yep. Admiral Nelson. Spice rum. Uh, cheapest one for the flavor. Very sweet. Are we ever going to do a rum tasting? I think we should. I mean, I, I guess so at some point, probably. It's unavoidable, really. Oh, but if we get big enough, we can do a, a second channel called Two Rums. It doesn't roll off the tongue. It doesn't, but it doesn't need to. It we'll needs, be drinking rum. Yeah, it needs to roll down the throat. <laughs> you can edit wanna, out that awkward silence. I don't want to hear about the I'm going to extend it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> So do you want to uh, introduce yourself, Magdalena, or do you want us to? Hi, I'm Magdalena. Great Yo. job. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of already did, but okay. Yeah, but do you want to tell tell anybody a little bit about yourself what, within the about? SCA? Yeah. Um. Well, I've been in the SCA since I was 12 years old. Better. <laughs> no, just lean towards it. You don't have to scoot over. <laughs> I've been in the SEA since I was about 12 years old. Um, I met these guys about five years ago. God, it's been that long. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Technically, it's been longer because I was knew you guys five years before I started dating him. We've been together for a year. Has it only been that long? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one's worse. Oh, Drake, you Thank see my you. new knife? Ooh. Has Eric got himself a new stabbing implement, courtesy of our close friend Dylan? Dylan. Or oh. as we like to call him, Kalen. Which you got a Kalen we, uh, knife. yeah, we, we actually misheard him pronounce his name when we first met him like six years ago. Yeah. And he does like it. So whatever. He's also known as Tanuki. Um yeah. large man in a lot of furs with a now two. Now, he used to have just one Tanuki pelt over his crotch, now he has two. <laughs> and have, have you fondled the uh the testicles uh, on it? I have fondled both sets, so yes. And if you don't know what a tanuki is, they're known for their large testicles. Yep. And they're especially soft fur. Very soft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, very excited with this purchase. I had planned on getting one from him at uh, Pensick this year, but um, but um, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Pensick got canceled, if you don't remember our listeners. Now I'm sad. I did remember. Actually, right? no, it didn't get canceled. It got pushed back a year. Oh, Postponed. yeah. Sure. Postponed. One year exactly. Huh. I would, I'm going to just call that canceled. Keep it up. You're going to get canceled. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> anyway, though. So, naturally, as as we do, we're going to break into a nice, fun, lighthearted SCA story first before we get into the actual train wreck that is the world at the moment. 
And in between those, we're going to get drunk. <sighs> we already started drinking, so. I always love these podcasts mixing rum with, you know, sketchy whiskey. <laughs> that one, That one looks classy. The last one was classy. But it's always sketchy because none of us have ever had it before. I mean, true. Ooh, we got some real bangers coming up too. I can't, I can't wait for uh, for those. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah. So I, I guess we got a what was that Cooper's Mark Honey Whiskey? Oh, we're gonna be trying. It's exactly what it is. It's a pretty bottle. Yeah. Hon- honey flavored bourbon whiskey, which you know what that means. Tastes like wood. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know wood. if you were going somewhere different with that or not. Wood and honey. And it was made in Kentucky. Yep. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah so um, the, the story we picked for all of you today is actually one of my favorite stories. It is. It is definitely a, uh, a good, fun time. Not overly family friendly, but a... Very little we do in the SCA actually is, I guess. Yeah. Most because the alcohol. If there wasn't alcohol involved, it probably would have been you know, fun for everybody. You don't know us very well. But <laughs> if there wasn't alcohol involved. So, so this is a game called Extreme Croquet that we'll be explaining that all of us have participated in. Mm, yes. Except for Magdalena. I was the water barrier. You, you were the... Um, caddy. caddy. I was yeah. the caddy, yeah. <laughs> caddy for our I was keeping croquet. people hydrated. That's a... It's a good role. Very important. <laughs> yes. During extreme croquet. Mm-hmm. So there I was. <laughs> Sometime in May last year during um, Pensic Light, which is the event that everybody goes to. to like set up, they like, pre-set up their camp. And yeah, kind of get to lay of the, the land. land and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So there I was, 600 miles away from home, at home, and with a bunch of people that I'd never really met before or hung out with before. And we're camping out. They, the, we, we ended up camping with like two people that uh, my girlfriend Isolt knew. I barely knew them. But I knew of them. I knew they were good people. And there was a few other people in the camp and they just decided that I'm the camp leader. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> you just look like a leader. I guess that's fine. You know, I can, I can herd cats. I'm not bad at it. I didn't really know what that entailed, but that's beside the point. Yeah. <laughs> the whole other story. So fast forward like two days, three days maybe. I don't even know. How long was I there? I was there for like a weekend. I think it was three days. Yeah. So fast forward a couple days and we're hanging out, we're drinking, we're partying, we're walking around and I hear talk of the first heat of Extreme Croquet. Apparently there's, there's like six heats. And there's finals, and there's like round robin, and double elimination, all this kind of bullshit. Very big words. Yeah. <laughs> big words that I learned drinking. Yep. <laughs> we'll forget what those, are, those are the only big words I know. <laughs> and lagavulin. There we go. So, I've said a few. Have you not retained them? Big words? Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, scintillating. What does that mean? What the fuck do you just say to me? <laughs> All right, never mind then. <laughs> Effervescence? Anything? Oh, I love that band. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Where was I? You were describing, you know, all the right. big, big I was, words. I was in a Pensic Light. Yeah, Pensic Light. There you were. There I was, eating a salad, drinking some milk. You know. And playing Extreme Croquet. So I, I managed to get into it. Multitasking. Apparently there there's like only so many people are out to play, but it was a it was a smaller event, not everybody that was supposed to show up showed up. So people just asked if I wanted to play. Mm. Like, uh, what is it? Like, it's croquet. I'm like, I've never played before, really. And like, all right, well, they also drink a lot of rum. Like, <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you have me at drink. <laughs> I, I already have a massive advantage over everyone here. You know, I drink. And and now I play croquet. Nice. So yeah, we 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 start that, and not to get too in depth for the rules because they are complicated, which adds a different level to the game. Considering you're just taking shot after shot after shot after shot of rum, mm. and there's a lot of rules. But <laughs> to uh, to simplify them, essentially you play croquet. If you don't know what croquet is, you, you're you're hitting a ball with a mallet through a, a wicket, which is just like a 
It's a U-shaped piece of metal stuck yeah. in the ground. Yeah, for the, for the people watching, just bad. No gang signs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, so, so you play croquet, but... Um, whenever someone makes it through the wicket, if you're the first person to make it through the wicket, everyone else has to take a shot. If you're the second person to make it through the wicket, you get to pick two people. And if you're like the third person, you get to pick one person to drink. Mm. In the meantime, basically they, they'll, they'll set up the wicket. They'll set up the goal just randomly. They'll just pick a spot and they'll put it somewhere. Yeah, this looks you know, good. A hundred yards away in the middle of a giant fucking puddle. <laughs> Yeah, you know, downhill. Yeah, downhill. Oh god, uh, that's bringing me back to some of the locations we had to shoot through. <laughs> yeah. Or they'll, they'll, they'll put it like behind a tree or some shit. And they'll, they'll say like you can only go through this way, or you can you can only go in the back door, you know, <laughs> and or you, you or you can go both ways. And you fuck that rule up, then you have to take a shot. <laughs> and in the meantime, you're, you're playing croquet. And the person who is farthest away, after after everyone tees off, the person who's farthest away gets to go until they're no longer the farthest one away. And every time your ball gets hit with, by another ball, you have to take a shot. <laughs> Up to a maximum of three times in a row. Yeah, which can be pretty rough when you manage to <laughs> land close to the wicket but not go through and everybody else is shooting for that fucking wicket. Yeah. So everybody's technically shooting for you at that point. The, so you're going to probably take those three fucking shots. Yeah, and, and during the first few heats of the game, there's five or six wickets and then the final match, there's seven wickets. And there's like, I think when, when I was playing, there was like ten people playing. Hmm. And I ended up coming in second place. I think I took somewhere between 15 and 20 shots. The person that actually came in first place took at least 25 shots and threw up about 10 times. Throwing up is legal, but you have to drink the shot. You can throw up immediately after you drink it, but it has to go down your esophagus. Yeah, you got to get that bad boy down. Everything else is no. I remember a point in time this, this man had to take four shots back to back. This is after he'd already taken, like, 15 shots. Oh, God, I would die. <laughs> he had to do four in a row, and he would, and he'd already thrown up at this point. You know, and we'd been playing for, like, two hours at least. God. And so he, he would, you know, y'all remember Puke Beard? Right? Yeah, Puke Beard. <laughs> yeah, he, he would take the fucking shot, like a champ, sit there for a second, and throw it up, and then take another shot, sit there for a second, throw it up, and he did that four times. What a... And the game wasn't over yet. A champion. <laughs> and he still played croquet, and he still beat me by a pretty good margin. Like, <laughs> and I don't remember exactly what my score was, but it was uh, it wasn't exactly close. Mm. You know, if I'd done really well on one wicket, I would have won. But there's what, like six wickets. Yeah. So if that means anything to you. A lot of missed opportunities. Yeah. So I, I play second. So me and him immediately move toward to, to the finals. And they have like three other fucking uh, games to play, which they were planning on doing at Penzig. And I believe they did. I think. And, and I, I actually got in contact with them. I got in contact with the uh, people on Facebook that host this for Penzig. And I said, I want to host one of the heats. <laughs> I got some people that want to play. Yes. And those people were you and you. Is that? Yeah. He, he pointed at myself and Draco. Yeah. And that that was an interesting time because I was basically just told, like, hey, I'm going to play some extreme croquet at Penzik. I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I, there's drinking, so I'm in. Yeah. Also, if you watch the vlog, I believe it was... Um, during Ed's birthday. Ed, Ed's birthday at Hemingway's. There's some clips of me that I, that I actually filmed playing um, yeah. playing it. Playing Extreme Kirk, right? If I'm not mistaken, he was that guy on the list. Because they didn't have his name. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah uh, Jake. Well, it took Drake us like name. four days to track down the person who actually had the list. <laughs> Yeah. Because like she, she wasn't on site, or she was up at the market, or this, or this, or that. We finally tracked her down. She was very busy. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, so they ended up just listing Jake as that guy. And I wish he would have won, actually. I wasn't. I came in third, I think. Let's not put you too high up there. <laughs> it was third or fourth. Was, you I came in fourth. Third. Was it fourth? Okay. And because that, that was a rough fucking game, too. Thatch was technically third. Thatch was third. That's it. He, he beat you. Fucked. He beat you by two points. That was it. But yeah, um, getting into it, we we got to Penzik and whatnot, and I, I can't remember what what day of Penzik was it on. Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. So was it like three, four days in? We, yeah, I think we, we got there on like Friday. Yeah, we got there like sometime Friday. Okay, so so yeah, but like four or five days in, you know, we uh, we just have a pack of just boggies just roll up with. This uh, very gnarly croquet set, like the, the the mallets are all steel. They're like just steel cylinders welded onto rods. Yeah, they, they had rules against like breaking the fucking mallets, and apparently someone just made and or donated some you know steel fabricated <laughs> croquet mallets. Yeah, because if, if you broke a wooden mallet, you had to drink the rest of the bottle of rum that you were drinking on, which. May or may not be rough, depending on where you're at in that bottle. Yeah. The, or what kind of rough? The, the game that I played was fucking terrible, because we had, like, Blackheart <laughs> and, I think, like, Sailor Jerry's or some other nasty fucking rum. For those of you who don't know, those two rums are awful. Yeah, they're just disgusting. But since uh, since I hosted it, I had to donate two bottles of rum. You actually donated three. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I, I, donated, I donated two Admiral Nelson's. And one of them was the coconut flavor one, which is oh, yeah, significantly yeah. less alcoholic, and it's just super tasty. It saved them. <laughs> it saved everybody. I think everybody there would have been <laughs> fucked, except for maybe the guy that ended up winning and gave it to um, Thatch. Thatch instead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember his name at all. He barely drank any water that whole time. Yeah, no. I, that, I that, watched his caddy I, drink. I no, I'm good. I would not want to go against him in a drinking contest. I would, I would have hated that. I mean, he'll die before he'll let you, uh, let you win. Was, yeah, it was a drinking, drinking contest. contest. Yeah. So, so the way you um, the way you win actually, if there's a tie, to uh, to clarify that, you can either play one more wicket with everybody that's tied, or you can have um, drink off, which <laughs> is just one of the most brutal drinking games I've ever seen. So I think it's a shot of rum every ninety seconds. I don't know if it's considered a game, honestly. It's a shot of rum. From what I remember, it was every ninety seconds. And you can't stumble, you can't throw up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he won because the other guy threw up. No, he, he won because the other guy stumbled. And then threw up. He's like, he threw up, though. Because that, if I recall, that guy, that guy was, he was, he was just a tiny little man. Yeah, there, there's three of them was in the final drink off. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the main one I'm thinking of, though, he was just a tiny, scrawny little guy. Yeah. And it's like a buck 20 at most. Yeah. And he was he was going hard. He was keeping up. Like he threw up a lot. <laughs> but I'll be damned if he didn't keep going. He was in it to win it. And he he was chasing with fucking water too. Yeah. Yeah. He had a gallon of water he was chasing all the shots with. And yeah, then they went on to the drinking contest. They had to take at least seven or eight shots. Yeah. And, and just the back contest alone. And they they actually failed the guys that said, like, you, you lose because it could possibly const- be construed that he stumbled and he argued it and a few of the people there actually argued it so that he fucking didn't stumble but everyone there hated him because apparently the guy's a dickhead yeah i guess so said, so. said, guy hey, was going up you. i guess said okay let's keep going yeah. <laughs> right, he was down <laughs> but no the, the ref said uh ref said you stumbled it's over you lose fuck off <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's hard to argue with that yeah which in all honesty was a good thing because he had to be carried home Oh yeah, yeah. He was he most was people playing that got fucked up. <laughs> I I got pretty drunk playing, like being there, just watching. Yeah, you were on the sidelines with yeah. me, and you were just you poured them a shot. I give was me just a shot. having a good time. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, during the drink contest, at one point, every time they took a shot, we took a shot as well. Oh yeah, we were playing along but at home. We had the luxury of <laughs> you know sitting there laughing and stumbling around. <laughs> yeah, we we could do that, not, not giving a shit whether we threw up or not. So we weren't thinking about throwing up. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, we we got all pretty easy on that one. I was um, happy to not be in the top three on that one personally. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. But I still had a lot of fun. Had a lot of shots. Had a lot of water too. Stayed hydrated. Thank you. Dead for three. 
Because nobody else brought a caddy but my boyfriend. <laughs> Do you remember the rest of that day? No. <laughs> All I remember is we played Extreme Croquet. I do, because I remember getting mad at him because he promised me food and then not giving me food. Wow. Wow. God. I had to go back to the camp by myself to go find food. <laughs> it's almost as if I was really fucking drunk. Wow. She had a wagon. It, it was, it Look at was Draco getting <laughs> too drunk to take care of his girlfriend. He made up for it later. You throw up on you? No. Is that, is that your kink? <laughs> no, no, sh- no shame. He actually took me up to the market and bought I'm me food. shaming. Just wondering if that's a kink. Is it a kink? I'm sure not it of is. mine. Are you sure? How sure are you? Without exposing too much of my search it. <laughs> I'm sure it is somewhere. <laughs> Rule 34, baby. Absolutely. But yeah, that's, that's the extent of what I remember um, from that day, I think. Nothing else stands out anyway because, you know, I think we easily went over a dozen shots just during extreme croquet alone. You were cussing at one point. I cuss every day. That was Tuesday. So that'd be the block party. Oh, yeah. So we did the block party afterwards. All right. (laughs) And I know I partied. I didn't miss anything. Good on you. I don't remember it very well, but I know I did it. God damn it. I was there. <laughs> My memory is not the point. So that's uh, that's our plan once uh, COVID gets lifted. We want to get our own uh, extreme croquet set. Yeah, going to get some uh, some good reliable pieces of steel, go ahead and weld together some basically war hammers, and play get some Get alcohol poisoning, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Get some of that coconut rum. I mean, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, it's not really a drinking game unless it gets, you know, dangerously close to alcohol poisoning, at least. Could you all imagine if you had to play that entire game drinking like Blackheart and Sailor Jerry's? I yeah. can imagine. I'd like to imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, ex- expound yeah. upon that. No, no, I, I, I can imagine it. I don't want to experience it. There you go. Because I've, <laughs> I've had plenty of Blackheart and Sailor Jerry's before at some of our old parties. That we would have that and not have fucking Admiral Nelson, so that was what we drank all night. I think I had a distinct advantage when I was playing, because I, um, I had Pandora as my caddy. Mm. And she was just like, she was bringing me like, bringing me like apple juice and shit for my chaser, which is just amazing. It's a really good <laughs> chaser. And like, she'd won before as well, because so you have to win to um, you have to win an extreme croquet to become a part of that camp. <laughs> and oh, so she, of- she's giving me like pointers and shit and stuff. Hmm. Most of the pointers were were on how to like out drink the rest, because the the actual croquet part's not as important. If you can outlast everyone else, you're probably going to place in the top two. I mean, maybe there's some pretty strong contenders there in the top three at the end. When y'all were playing, yeah, yeah. when I was playing. It, it was like, I mean, the, the guy that tied first, the other guy that we didn't talk about that was in the drinking contest, I was mm-hmm. playing against him as well. But And I was playing against, uh, obviously, Puke Beard and a few other people. I think Wolf I was playing against. But so you no, were some drinkers. Yeah, I, I, they, they were drinkers, but not on my level, if that makes sense. Old statement, but probably not untrue. They were casual well, again, y'all, again, y'all, y'all have that game. Y'all were drinking Admiral <laughs> Nelson's coconut, which yeah. is like 25, 30%. Mm-hmm. We were drinking like 40% rum. So by the end of it, everyone else is passed out and throwing up. Sailor Jerry's is 93 proof, I think. Yeah. So yeah. But by the end of it, I, I, I didn't throw up at all. They were also played. drinking vodka on top of that. Yeah. And what do you think we're using as a chaser? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when, when, when I played, I didn't throw up. During, after, at all. I don't think any of us really got to that point. Did, 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 did that? Everyone else I played against, when when, not, when I did Extreme Croquet, every single person threw up and passed out. No, you all were fine. Thatch so, was stumbling back up to the top. That's a, that's a rough way to fine. be. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's where our true testament comes in. We had the endurance. Me, if I, was, if I have a good enough chaser, and it doesn't burn too much when it goes down, I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Again, your guys' chaser was but Gatorade and Kool-Aid. <laughs> if I do drink something that causes me to throw up, if I have a game that causes me to throw up, I just keep going because we're just going to throw all the alcohol straight back up. <laughs> this. You can rally. All right. 
that that's that's like taxing though on your body, you know. Like it's exhausting to throw up over and over and over again. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. You'll you'll exhaust yourself. I, I do want to touch on some of the because we we get dehydrated faster. So we we brought up kind of briefly before, but some of the fucking wicket locations. Oh yeah. <laughs> holy shit! All right. Well, it started off pretty simple. Our our camp was at the top of a very massive section of land, so for the most part, it was just a kind of downhill dirt road. <laughs> And we went down that at first. And then we got to a 45-degree angle hill that went down. How, how far does that hill go? Well, first off, what's the name of the road? Let's say, what's the name of the road? Which one? They all, they all, that they that road look. name was Abandoned Hope. Oh, yeah. Abandoned Hope <laughs> is the For name. For a reason. Yeah, it's a 45-degree angle. Easily, how long is that thing? It's like um, It has to be at least 150 feet yeah, huh? long. So at least 150 it feet. It seemed like to go on forever. Wait, no. Um, sorry, yards. 150 yards. Okay, 150 yards. 45 degree angle. The, the the 45 degree angle lasts about 150 feet. Yeah. The entire road is about 150 yards. But that ended up being so 150 feet, 45 degree angle, gravel covered yeah. path down With the hill. Cracks and roots and all it, that. Kind the, of crap. the entire road is just made out of gravel, not like small. Like comfortable gravel that's been no. like driven on a the, lot. The big granite yeah, it was made out of like granite. It wasn't made out of gravel, it was granite. There was a big split halfway <laughs> and, down and And our dumbasses left camp without shoes on. Oh yeah, there was that. We didn't have shoes on. Mm. That was fun. Yeah, I ended up wrapping there was my some soft grass nearby. Yeah. There was. I actually <laughs> wrapped my feet in like my, my sash that I wear. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> God. Yeah, so as you were think, uh, saying, I think, like, they put the wicket at the bottom of that fucking hill. Yeah. So we had no, to... No, actually, it wasn't the bottom of the hill. It was up against a tree next to a camp just before the end of the hill because it was before Bangerang. Oh, right. You could yeah. still go... You If you miss the wicket, you could go down the rest of the fucking hill. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> you could get very unlucky and just keep going. And multiple people did. Or yep. end up in somebody else's camp. Man, I think that somebody did. Yep. two people. <laughs> yeah, that happened a couple of times. Yeah, that was that was fun. Probably uh, my my least favorite uh, wicket that we played because again there was a significant lack of shoes on our part on this granite covered gravel hill. Was it was it you and I that ended up in the bush? <laughs> um, clarify, please. Uh, so <laughs> the bush <laughs> to the bush. Im- immediately to the right of the hill before the first camp, it's just covered in tall grass. <laughs> Thicket and bushes. That was you. That wasn't him. That was somebody else. I think it was Touch. Well, there, there was a fucking <laughs> line of balls at some point in a fucking ditch down there. Too. Oh, yeah. That was yeah, after I got out of the bush. Because he went the other way down the hill. He didn't go near the bush. I went smart. <laughs> well, y'all went brutal on it, too. Because, like, when, when I played, we were nice-ish. <laughs> to everyone, people were get, like when y'all were playing. People were getting targeted. People were getting fucking like, like because there, there's a rule that you have to at the very least you have to hit it in the general direction to to the wicket. Yeah, and people are literally going at like a fucking forty degree angle, you know, to the wicket <laughs> just to hit somebody's fucking ball. Just because like, they they could upset. win if they get a you know decent fucking hit on their thing they could literally place first place uh, but they started fuck it no you made me drink like twice in the last round i'm gonna hit your fucking ball actually there was a there was a thing uh one of the guys apparently did some fuckery so we all got together and decided to fuck with his ball well it was the guy so that everyone yeah, hated it, it was the guy that everyone hated we yeah. fucked with each other just a little bit so that we could fuck with him more yeah well, and, and that's the thing. If you hit someone else's ball, not only do they have to take a shot, but you get to uh, hit your ball again. So people would, like, every, everybody's targeting, like, this one guy. Or they're either targeting this one guy, or they're targeting the person that made them drink the most in the last round. He yeah. almost got disqualified because he threatened somebody for hitting his ball. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. I mean, he, threatened the skinny, he threatened the skinny karate guy, and he just kind of went, I just hit... Oh, oh I do remember that now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was and a, the ref was like, if you can't play nice, you're disqualified. That was fun, though. Yeah, good good times all around. And no, it, it, 
when when we got to that point of being towards the end, and you could win, yes, but it's not enough to just win. Others need to fall as well. <laughs> yeah, that was that was <laughs> that our beat. Yeah. Everybody had to die worse than the others. Yeah, so there there was definitely significant targeting, knocking people away. Winning was the easy part. Yeah. Also, the ref, like the the listeners at home, they might be thinking about the ref as some sort of official in this. No, I had to go and wake them up from a drunken night hangover <laughs> <laughs> at like noon. But I I'll, think. Be, I'll be damned if he wasn't there though. So he, 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 he was there. He was carrying a chair around the entire fucking time. And smart man, <laughs> just yelling at people. He had an assistant, so he could he stay did. in one spot. He had his yeah, own caddy. <laughs> I ain't gonna pour another fucking shot. Fuck you guys. Well, I think it was supposed no, he to. He had two assistants. He had one pouring the shots and he had one sitting by the wicket to make sure the rules were being followed. It was supposed to start at like one o'clock. I think they finally got there to our camp at like two thirty or some shit. <laughs> yeah, we didn't start, start until three. Yeah. Well, I mean, you put it in the middle of Penzik. Of course, you know people are hungover. They're not going to be on time for shit. But that was fun, and I can't wait to uh, to do it again and I actually can't, play some of you. I can't wait to win it next time. You gonna play against me? Okay. And I'm a damn good croquet player. You played once. <laughs> yeah. So have I. But I came in second place against veterans of the Guys, game. you're both mm. going to lose because I've played once. You want to just beat him? I'm going to anyway. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm beating I'm, both Outside of, of croquet. Like right now. Uh, yeah, no. Oh, so I was talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure the camera's rolling. So, oh, don't worry. You know me, I record <laughs> so everything. that's extreme croquet. Yeah. So. Oh, also, yes, I, I mentioned earlier that I made it to the finals, but they decided to put finals during fizzball, and I'm always going to do fizzball first. Yeah. I wanted to do both, but they wouldn't let me. <sighs> Damn shame. Unfortunately, even though croquet was right across the street from fizzball, I couldn't do both at the same time. Yeah, you can't double dip, unfortunately. But... Everybody agreed, even the people that run Fizzball and all the players in the finals of Extreme Croquet, all of them agreed that'd be fucking badass. Yeah, just have Jesus running both. back and forth. <laughs> yeah, at the same time. But the person, you know, the powers that be said nay. So. Well, you got to listen to those, even though you were Jesus at the yeah. time. And Damn you, good one or that. Yours should have been the only word that mattered. But Yeah, well. I did make it to the semifinals for Fizzball, so there's the, yeah. I think that's the farthest I've ever made it. Mm. That's for a different time. Yeah. One day we'll talk about that. <laughs> but all right. For so now, let's talk about whiskey. Yep. Oh, yay. Yep. Finally going to break into the whiskey. Let's give this bad boy a try. As you said, Cooper's Mark honey flavored bourbon whiskey. Golden colony honey. What does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, charcoal filtered, small batch. Classic Cooper's Mark blended with real honey and other natural flavors. 35% alcohol, 70 proof. Uh, that's a lot of cursive. <laughs> it's hard for him to read that. In that print, in that font. Uh, yeah. Uh, Cooper's Mark Golden Colony Honey is a silky smooth, delicious take on our classic small batch bourbon whiskey. Enjoy on its own or mixed. No, you're the one reading it like it's a book report. The cursive. <laughs> I mean, ugly cursive too. No, that could be a lot better. That's. that's I horrible. can see that you're holding a bottle. So, Jim. produced and bottled by <laughs> Cooper's Mark Whiskey Company, Princeton, uh, Minnesota. And this was it. M N. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I went to school. Let's <laughs> crack this bitch open. I do like this good. bottle. I like the feel of this bottle. It's just a nice, classic feeling bottle, yeah. and I think I think I subconsciously grabbed that because it said Cooper's on it. Yeah. So uh, where we camp at at Penzix is called Cooper's Lake. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Definitely keep that Ooh, bottle. Got that's that nice sound. cork pop. Yep. I love that sound. Yep. Doesn't smell bad. Ooh. All right. Let's sniff. Definitely can actually smell like a legitimate honey flavor, like not not Did just you like want to smell it? not honey scented, but an actual like raw honey um, like scent coming from it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of syrupy, a little thick. Not that. Don't worry, I like things that are thick. So. <laughs> Give a little pre taste. Okay. 
That's interesting. <laughs> That's a interesting, interesting flavor. And that facial expression doesn't leave me uh, <laughs> too <laughs> good about it. Tired. Well, first off, I, I spilled a little bit when I was pouring on the label, and it's it's like damaging the label. Well, either it's a shitty label or it's very corrosive honey whiskey. Or the label's biodegradable. Um, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm sure it is. Disagree with the corrosive part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind. I I'm guess a, I'm a little terrified now. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. Have you have you tried yours yet? I have not. I poured you a big one and handed it to you first, so you could try it while I was pouring the rest. I mean, typically I like to let other people try because you know I want to make sure people are talking while I'm uh, while I'm drinking. Mm. Well, you're not drinking yet, so I'm not going to talk. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it tastes wow. like uh, alcoholic honey. I and kinda, wood. <laughs> and wood. No, I'm definitely getting the wood coming through. I can't shoot this. But I this don't is, think I can shoot this. But this is smoother what than most fuck? whiskey. It's stickier. That too. Okay. So what do you think? No, you know, okay. uh, obviously, the wood flavor is coming through for me. Um, it's... It's overly sticky. It's a whiskey, so of course it's got wood flavor. <laughs> well, it's a bourbon. The, the wood flavor didn't come through for that peanut butter crack we tried. <laughs> hey, or, or the praline for that matter. And that's that's kind of the vibe I'm getting is that praline. Like Except that's honey flavored. Mm. Less syrupy. Yeah, all I'm tasting is it feels like I'm whipping honey off a tree. <laughs> all right, well, here, here's, here's my... Um, interpretation of it genuinely a it does burn it's got it's got that whiskey burn not in your mouth but definitely after it goes down your throat it definitely burns on the way down Mm -hmm. it genuinely tastes like somebody took a barrel of honey and just put it through the whiskey making process it it just tastes (laughs) like just made fucking liquor mead Basically, yeah. yeah, just liquor level mead, because it it just tastes like alcohol or like methanol, ethanol. It tastes like genuine alcohol, the wood of the barrel, and honey. That's kind of what I'm getting. Yeah, I agree Le- with legitimate honey. Actually, now that you mention it, it kind of tastes like somebody poured a little bit of whiskey into a big vat of honey. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting specifically. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, which oddly enough, you know, color me fucking crazy. Whoa. But it tastes like honey flavored whiskey. Hmm. Yeah. You, you know that is You're a not wrong. that is an interesting take on this. <laughs> but it does wor- burn more the more you just sit there and to, sip it. Yeah. To expound upon that, it doesn't. It uh, I have I have to backpedal a little bit. It doesn't necessarily taste like honey flavored whiskey. It tastes like whiskey flavored honey. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good. But the, the honey is definitely more of a dominant flavor. And for some people, that might be a good thing. Maybe I don't know. Not this crowd. I like honey flavored whiskeys. I've had several honey, like Tennessee honey. Mm-hmm. I love that shit. Mm-hmm. This this tastes like whiskey flavored honey, though. That's a good way to put it. It's it's very sweet. Yeah. You're, you're you're getting an alcohol burn and it's sticky. Yeah. <laughs> like Tennessee honey isn't sticky. It tastes like whiskey with some honey in it. This tastes like something would be really good to give people here. Have a taste of this, but don't ever let them have more than that. Yeah. This tastes like something you could put on a dessert. We got another one of those. We're slowly building up a repertoire of whiskeys that we can use in cooking. But not that we can just sit and drink for the entire time that we're yeah. here. I mean, I, 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 do you want to try and shoot this? I got enough left here that I'm going to try it. So I'm going to give it it's a... It's dangerous to go alone. Okay. So we'll, we'll go ahead and... I'm not looking forward to that. And that says all you need to know. I <laughs> Like, could you drink this for the rest of the podcast? I don't want to, personally. Just because of the, the sweetness level. I feel like it's going to be just <laughs> overpowering. All right, Drake, I see you got a little bit left in your glass. You want to shoot, shoot with us? Want me to top you off? No, I'm good. No, you're good. Okay, so I think <laughs> I think our opinions are... Uh, Cheers to this. There's pros, mostly I, I cons. I poured myself way but too much. Do you want to pour some of them in there? 
No, you don't need any more. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> well, down the hatch. Mm. That actually didn't shoot bad. Not good, but not bad. No, I actually kind of agree with that because when you shoot it instead of sip it, you get it all out of the way, which is a bad way to put it. But like all the, all the liquid's gone, and then you're just left with a mouth coating of honey. Yes and no. Because if, if you remember when we first cracked this, I shot a, a good amount. But you also switched it in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did do that. But I think... I think we we numbed our senses and our taste buds by <laughs> sipping on it for five minutes, and then we shot it. I shot half mine, and I mean, it, it went down... I guarantee it's significantly worse. I'm not saying that. <laughs> if you hadn't been sipping on it for five minutes. It went down you prepped your slightly time. smooth, but there was an aftertaste. Yeah. And I'm not disputing that. Well, and I'm personally and not honest, displeased with it. Sorry, go ahead. You taste more of the wood if you sip on it. If you shoot it, you don't taste it at all. Yeah. In my opinion. I bet this is a great mixer. Like I said, I, I, I can think of multiple things I would love to make make drinks with this. Mm. Or multiple drinks. I, I, I think it would this. be fantastic with ginger ale. Yes. Probably. That I could say. Because ginger ale would cut that sweetness a little bit. Yeah. That it would. Fucking tonic water would probably be good. Absolutely. But that's that's all other discussion i think this As straight neat no i can't sip on this if it was ice fucking cold it would still be a little tough in my opinion maybe uh Drake, get this fucking off the table Hold on, on. i do want to make a note real quick put that back up i think this is the least we have taken out of a bottle of whiskey <laughs> it, it, it's possible this doesn't even feel like the worst one we've had but we we legitimately took like a tenth of the bottle. To be fair, on the other bad whiskeys we did, we I think we had Vaughn with us who took another shot with us, and Magdalena did not. Yeah. God, I miss Vaughn. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of My which, bad, it's a good dessert yeah. alcohol to put on top of a dessert, or like he said, to mix with something straight. No, I don't want another shot. It's too sweet. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Speaking of Vaughn, Black Lives Matter. Yes, indeed they do. <laughs> That's a segue. Yeah, segues are weird. (laughs) So, if... um, I don't want to use the phrase if you live under a rock, or unless you've been living under a rock. I'm pretty sure people that live under rocks would have heard about everything that's going on right now. Yeah. A little hard to miss. Yeah. So, Black Lives Matter. And let's, let's break into the... Well, 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 the nitty gritty of it. Okay, so before when when we originally started the concept of this this podcast, we we kind of wanted to stray away from what could be considered a political, yeah, and like, controversial. like super political, controversial topics. But we didn't want to lose potential fans. But on this, no. No, we realize that's the coward's way out. Yeah, and if it's one thing we're not, we're not cowards. So we absolutely will take this stand. Yeah, and moving forward, we're probably not going to stray away from other controversial subjects, I imagine. Yeah, might as well go ahead and rip the fucking Band-Aid off, I I guess. Knowing the people here, no, you're probably not going to. If we're going all in on one thing we believe in, we might as well go all in on everything else we believe in. Absolutely. Even if that means we only have fucking six people listen to us. Yeah. And we're half of them. It doesn't fucking matter. At this point, we have... We have somewhat of a platform. And at this point, I feel like it's our duty to use that platform to, you know... Just, you know, get support for good causes. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's only a fucking two dozen people that listen to these podcasts or yeah. watch the vlogs. Being generous, but yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and um, literally last weekend, um, I think we briefly mentioned it at the end of the last podcast, if anyone listened to that. Um, ourselves, as well as Warren, we went out, we, we protested, we got to... Uh, I got some footage of the whole situation. We were out there for it. And, yeah, I completely wholeheartedly, like, stand by the entire movement. This is 
honestly right. been a problem for way longer than it ever should have been in this what's about supposed to be. About 400 years, yeah. About 400 years or so. Been a little, little long on that. <laughs> Systemic racism. Not tight. Not a fan. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah, so as, as I said, we, we were out there with the protest and uh, in our city. Have we... We we do we mentioned care? we've mentioned multiple yeah. times so, that so we're, we live in Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. And, actual hell. Yeah, and we were out there at the protests this this last Saturday. I forget the date. Thirtieth, the end of May. I yeah, don't know. sometime around the end of May. And I know it was the same weekend. We were supposed to be down at the beach for um, our birthday. In in a way, in a way that was kind of serendipitous because if we were at the beach, then yeah. We wouldn't have been able to go to that. I mean, we we went there and God, thousands of people at the state house. People people were speaking for hours and lots of you know just incredibly motivating. Yeah, there things. there there was a lot of very moving speeches that went on. A few, a few that didn't go yeah, over too well. There's some weird stuff. Yeah, it just didn't make sense. We we were there with Vaughn and he was just. Saying, what the fuck is this person talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I didn't know. No one else did either, I don't think. Um, most of the time when that kind of thing happened, they were, you know, the mic was taken away from them and it was given to somebody with something more relevant to say. Yeah. But, yeah, so we, we got to witness a, a lot of very moving speeches from some very influential people. Yeah, I think we had our... Um our mayor up there. I think we had some uh, senators up there. Yeah, a few people uh, as well that were going to be running for seats of power, yeah. which you know may or may not have been you know a, a a boost up as far as like a political stance goes. But at the same time, it's a worthy cause to get behind. So, and then we uh, we we marched to the local precinct, which was about I don't know, four or five blocks away. Mm, yeah, and there was no motivational speakers there, no speakers of any kind, no no leaders to to direct the crowd or to direct their focus, and so I'll, I'll admit there were some agitators there. Some were police, yeah, and some were unknowns. I will say, and the crowd got divided, the crowd got split, the crowd got agitated, and shit just hit the fucking fan. And well, I mean, we we were out there for uh, at least a, a couple hours at the police precinct until things did start to escalate. And anybody that was legitimately protesting, honestly, like we all started to clear out around that time. And then you had the remainder behind, and then it started to escalate. Yeah, really badly. I, I remember we we had there there had to be at least five hundred people there, and then one person threw a bottle. And then six people threw bottles. Yeah. And yeah. half the crowd just fucking left. And I said, fuck this, I'm out. Yeah, because they, they could tell it was going to go downhill very quickly from there. And it did. Um, eventually, bottles escalated to people picking up rocks out of potholes and throwing them at police cars. And yeah. and we were there, Vaughn. We were actually trying to keep people from escalating the situation because, you know, that, that only ends badly. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I had so many people, um, like Vorn included, getting upset because there were there were people at the back of the crowd throwing things at the police line. And you had people directly against the police line peacefully protesting. And getting hit in the back of the head with shit people were yeah, throwing. Yeah, people being hit in the crossfire. And at the same time, if something did escalate, the first people that are going to experience something are the ones at the front peacefully protesting. Yeah, a lot of people against those lines, Yeah, they, 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 they weren't... I'll, I'll admit, some of the people up there I, I saw firsthand were shit-talking to cops, yelling at them, and just generally you know, agitating them. But 90% of the people up there were having conversations with the cops behind their shields well, and, and, and talking with them, getting their perspective and giving their perspective. Yeah. Trying to be polite, trying to be civil. Yeah. And, and, and protesting. And, yeah. Even to be yeah. honest, like even the people right there who, who were like yelling in the faces of and cussing up police, that's it's valid. It's yeah, it's still completely valid. And it's no, like it's, it's not something that should ever be considered like that. 
should not escalate violence yeah. from just being mad well, and, and that, yelling. That's what was scaring too, because these cops were out there in full fucking riot gear, right? I could go out there with a 12 gauge and unload an entire fucking cylinder of fucking, you know, bug shot at them and they'd be fucking fine. Yeah. And it was, it was terrifying because one of the agitators I spoke of, they were up there and they, they had like a rolled up like sign or some shit. Mm. And they were like, they were just like bonking the fucking cops in the head and, and they're like riot gear. And I'm sitting there and like, obviously the cops is going to be fucking fine. Yeah. Right. That, that, that dude could have an aluminum baseball bat and whack him in the head as hard as he possibly could and break his bat. And the cop would barely flinch. Yeah. Right, that that ride gear was like state of the art. Yeah, it was <laughs> just legit. And yeah, so this, this guy's just you know playfully just like bonking cops in the head with his rolled up sign over their shields, and, and the cops weren't doing anything. Yeah, they they actually weren't responding to it at all. Thank God. But that was terrifying because mm-hmm. the cops, if they wanted to, they could have. Taken that as assault, yeah, like, like they considered a, sim- a simple assault, yeah. and they they could have escalated the situation right there. They could have fucking they, and all the cops behind them were sitting there with fucking le- less than lethal shotguns, beanbag rounds. Every single one of them has tasers and OC spray on them. They they have a shitload. You just see every cop walks out. They have a shitload of the um, the tie wraps, yeah, for for uh, people's wrists. The ties, yeah. Zip ties. Good word. Thank you. Correct word. So they, they, they weren't there ready for the situation to escalate. Yeah. And so many things happened that they, they could have used as their excuse to escalate it. Yeah, it was honestly it was terrifying. It was honestly surprising it didn't escalate sooner yeah. than it did. Like I, I was I was actually legitimately surprised. There's some people there, you know, chucking their water water bottles and chucking rocks and stuff and just beaming these cops in the head. Like some some of them without shields on. Without any kind of protection at all, yeah. there's some dickhead fucking cop up there, just literally acting like he's a target for everybody, standing in the middle of the steps away from any other police officer, just catching bottles and like literally going out of his way to try and catch bottles, and you know, you know, half empty water bottles and full water bottles getting fucking chucked at him and shit. So of course people start targeting him. Yeah, and most of these people are just lobbing it at him. And he's just like catching in, like the, the crowd was actually kind of laughing and playing along at some points. And like he, he would catch a bottle, and like everybody would fucking cheer because he's just fucking like calming them out of midair. And everybody's like, ah, ah, cool. And then he got a bottle and just dumped it out in front of hundreds of people. Just just they a are, big middle finger. They're out there in ninety five degree fucking weather, you know, no cloud coverage at all. Like, yeah. Everybody's dehydrated. Everybody's having a shitty day. Several of the police actually had to get carried inside because they were passing out. And, yeah, this cop just uh, attempts to escalate the situation. He he knows the outcome of doing that. Yeah. Like, what what are you trying to prove by dumping out water in front of a shitload of dehydrated people? And, obviously, you know, I'm mad about the person that threw it because I could have fucking taken that water. Everybody else there could have taken that water. Yeah, you're generally, like, throwing supplies at that point, which is a little silly. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, you got all kinds of things thrown out there. That that cop caught, like, several water bottles, got hit in the face by one yeah, was, after fumbling another. <laughs> yeah, he, he fumbles one and looks where it fell, and someone just fucking beamed him yeah, as right. hard as they could. And surprisingly, he played it off really well. Yeah, I, I will give him that. Again, that's, that is legitimately assault on the police officer. Yeah. But he, he, he did the whole just, you know, like, Ah, oh, you you got me. Ha ha ha. And then he went inside, and he wasn't a target anymore. Yeah. And well, he also caught like a bunch of other shit. He, he caught fucking food and everything. Yeah. Dude, he he caught he a McDonald's. Yeah. Bag. Yeah. By the end of it, he had like a full combo meal in his hands. Yeah. I, mean, I swear to God. He probably went inside to eat it. The fat fuck. <laughs> Goddamn pig. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> what? I'll say it. <laughs> like it's a little it harsh. Would have been funnier if it was a donut. But is it harsh enough? No, a cab. <laughs> Agreeable. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's how our um, protest experience went. Apparently, you know, after we left, the like, it got to the point of like rounds being fired. At it got to that point as we were leaving because there was nothing more we could do. 
yeah, everything was starting to just spiral out of control. Even even Vorn, who was there legitimately just to do crowd control to prevent stuff like that, he was like, yeah, we, we this, were, this is the moment we, we need to go. We were there to stand in between the cops and peaceful protesters. Yeah. And I have no problem doing that. that I, I would gladly take a fucking rubber bullet or a beanbag round or a fucking tear gas canister to protect a peaceful protester. Yeah, exactly. But after the first round of bottles got thrown, I'm convinced that all the legitimate peaceful pro or the that vast majority of the peaceful protesters left. Yeah. At the first sign of escalation, and I think all of them, more more or less, all of them dipped out once it really escalated. The ones that aren't stubborn, yeah. Yeah, and like I'm, I'm not saying the people that stayed there weren't trying to prove a point. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I I truly believe that they uh they they had a point to prove and they they deserve to be mad. They're allowed to be mad, and their their voice needs to be heard and hasn't for two hundred years. What are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it was it Martin Luther King Jr. said? Uh, riots is the uh, voice of the unheard. But yeah, I mean, what what, what, are, what are you gonna do if you've been uh, complaining about systemic racism for hundreds of years? And it's just and, falling on fucking deaf ears yeah. the whole time. I know there's another recent quote that um, there's not more race of racism right now. It's just getting filmed more. Yeah, yeah. access to access to information is just more prevalent. Yeah. And I, I think that's completely fucking true. It, it's like, I think we were talking just earlier, um, uh, not candid or anything. The, the Rodney King riots and the LA riots, that just happened. That blew up because one person happened to have a fucking giant, you know, this is in what, the 80s? Yeah. One person happened to have one of them fucking 20 pound tape recorders <laughs> that was loaded and was able to fucking film it. Yeah. So you, that you, happens every fucking day, though. Yeah, and so, you, you uh, can only imagine how bad it was before, like, this. Things that didn't make, like, media and uh, information the, sharing. The, uh, the Martin Luther quote, which, you know, a bunch of white guys quoted Martin Luther once again. Well, how, about, but, uh, how about Martin Luther King? I don't care about the, the church during the Renaissance. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> once said, a riot is the language of the unheard. Yeah. Okay. And I, I actually, I truly believe that because once you get to a certain point, what the fuck are you going to do? No one's listening to you. No one gives a shit. Yeah, you can talk all you want, but yeah. profiling by, by police officers is 100% a thing. Yeah. Besides peaceful, peaceful protest, get news coverage, but a riot or unpeaceful protest, get a lot yeah. of news coverage. Absolutely. Yeah. Peaceful protest gets news coverage. Riots get change. Yeah, they get results. Like Martin Luther King, one of the greatest civil rights leaders of all time, peaceful protested, and he 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 got a lot of people behind the calls. Yeah, and love. he's a, a, an incredibly good speaker, and at, at a you know incredibly uh, strong cause for to get people behind. Yeah, but well, you, the you Civil look at Rights it. Act. When when was that voted in? Oh, well, let's see, you know, um, six days it? after his assassination. Yeah. You know, six days of rioting yeah. after that, then something actually happened. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people like to use, um, that as some kind of, some kind of excuse. A lot of, a lot of white people, unfortunately, like to put it out there as like, oh, Martin Luther King never, you know, rioted. He always yeah, had peaceful And he pressure. still got fucking killed. Yeah. But like, I, I would love to sit here and just talk about civil rights leaders for an entire podcast. Yeah. I could we, I could talk about fucking uh, Malcolm X and you know Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that that'd be controversial. Gandhi's entire fucking lifetime. God. Nelson Mandela. He yeah mm. and, and yeah and obviously Martin Luther King Jr. and but that that's that's a whole other fucking podcast that I would love to have you know Vaughn or you know any other. Uh, African American friends, or yeah, this, any just, minority on here, yeah, not, not some white pasty, yeah, just not a group of fucking white people trying about to revolutionaries. Mm. Uh, now, don't get us wrong; we're definitely still going to be talking about this uh, this movement, just in other ways, because there are a lot of interesting things that are going on in relation to this. Yeah, it, have you been on Facebook? Have you actually gotten in a Facebook argument? I refuse to argue with people on Facebook because it doesn't Same. fucking go anywhere. Same. I disagree. 
You're I mean, not going to change their mind. It just it tells me who to unfriend, but none of my friends are arguing against my point of view because I don't have friends with dumbass mindsets. I've ha- I've had one. Well, sorry, I have I have one, but I unfollowed him a long long time I, ago. I, I've had one Facebook friend try to argue with me, <laughs> and the worst part was he did it at like six o'clock in the morning. Nobody's got time for that. At I about six checked your phone at you, <laughs> and like. On on one note, I get where he's coming from because he's he's trying to look at it in the view of knowing the guy from high school. He's trying to look at it in a point of view of I don't see racism anywhere. We are all together. We're all one people. I don't know what you're talking about. Fucking blind. Yeah, he's that's just being blind. blind. Yeah. So that's, yeah, no, that's 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 not blind. That's textbook. Cognitive dis- dis- uh, dissonance, you know. So that's and that's what he's getting. At. He's sitting there going, you know, yeah, I get Black Lives Matter, but all lives matter. Like that's not the point, man. Yeah, and the I, point mm. is, we we are looking. We're trying to look after a group of people who are being discriminated against. So we're looking after them and helping them rise up. We're not worried about everybody else at the moment. Yeah, it comes with that whole stance of like, and yes, he, all lives matter. Everybody else is fine right now. <laughs> and he said, they go, well, they shouldn't be looting. I was like, don't worry about the people looting. Yeah, that's, that's a distraction. If you're worried about the people looting, then worry about them as a separate note. Worry about the protest. It's the protest and what people are trying to say that you need to hear. Don't worry about the few minority of people that are looting. Worry about the ninety percent that are peacefully protesting what they're trying to say and do. Yeah, and you're right. Like when when someone brings up a uh, looting and in defense of their argument, they're trying to to derail the argument. Right? Yeah, they're trying right. to detract from the original point. Well, that's the whole like um, this the same argument of like, well, just because there's a few bad cops, it doesn't make yeah. all cops mm-hmm. bad. Like, okay, just because there's a few looters doesn't make the protest any less relevant. Well, not to Trump, though. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, they're, they're all fascists. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> mm. Oh, God. I think that might be one of the next things coming up. Is that, uh, okay, well, let's let's segue into one but, of our next talking points. But not yet. I actually had a point on that whole oh, okay, thing. We're okay, okay. Bring, bring it back around. You, you, you raised a very good point that I actually wanted to speak on. You don't have a lot of people on your Facebook because you, you unfriend them. Right, that that you know talk shit. They say like all lives matter. I don't see racism yeah, or, I just, or, or just are racist. I, I never really friend them in the first place. Yeah, so. and nothing wrong with that, obviously. But everyone that I I know more or less lives in some form of an echo chamber. Yeah, with the people that they associate with, and the people that they friend, the people that they mm-hmm. talk with, and the only people that kind of get portrayed as being truth seekers and being unbiased are, in my experience, moderate conservatives. Because they have the luxury of leaving their echo chamber to try and have a nice conversation with the other point of view, right? But, you know, every, every, like looking from the outside, outside looking in, yeah, the moderate conservative looks super unbiased. When, when they're talking with the oppressed minority. Mm-hmm. And like, so why are you, uh, why are you mad? Like, like, what, what, do, what do you, what do you mean? Why am I mad? I've been oppressed and all my fucking friends and family have been murdered. All my ancestors have been murdered, you know, due to systemic racism for fucking, you know, centuries. Centuries. <laughs> like, oh, well, you know, stop. Like, okay. Well, that's, you know, you're racist. And you know, then the the modern conservative steps back. It's like, oh no, I'm getting called racist. I'm getting attacked, and I was trying to have a nice, peaceful conversation with with these people. And and look at the 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 intolerant left being being fucking mad and shit. And you know, so 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 much for for you know inclusive uh, inclusivity. <laughs> What's the word? Inclusivity. Being inclusive. Okay, let's we'll, go with that. We'll go with that. That's a, words are hard. That's a word. Yeah, words are hard right now. 
Uh, and I'm mad about it because I, I I recently had fucking conversations with several fucking moderate conservatives, mm-hmm. and it's bullshit. Like I, I've tried to come up with a with a solid analogy for that, and the best I could really think of was like you turn down an alley and you see two people, and one of them just got fucking stabbed, right? Yeah, and they they got a knife sticking out of their gut, and I get it. What happened here? And the fucking guy that's dying on the ground is like, this guy stabbed me. And the guy sitting there is like, whoa, easy now, all right? Easy fella. I'm trying to be unbiased in this situation. I saw exactly what happened. Let's let's everybody calm down for a second, all right? Well, this guy's dying. And by the time he finishes his statement, which is probably a lie, the guy's dead. Yeah. And you're sitting there like, you know. (laughs) You look at it as like... uh, In in my experience, a lot of what I'm seeing is more... Where they are sitting there going, I'm not paying attention to what's going on out in the world, and I'm getting my news and sources from very few and limited places. So they're, all they're, they're in echo chambers. So all I'm hearing is people are, yes, somebody died. It was horrible. That was police brutality. that needs to stop. But everybody's just looting about it. I don't understand how people are looting. Why are there just hundreds of thousands of people? They don't what, hear about the peaceful protesting. Why are protesting. so many people mad? No, well, and, they don't hear no, about the peaceful actually, protesting actually, or the police, extra police for no, no. or anything like well, that. On that note, I've actually seen like that that same like um, argument used. And it should it's so shitty that it's not reversed. Yeah. Like, it's a shame there's looting. But why the fuck are black people dying? Yeah. Not it's a shame a black person was murdered. But why are people but, looting? Like, don't have that thing. fucking argument. Yeah. It's don't, bullshit. Value the human life. And that's Please. Obvious, yeah. uh, it's obvious. That's a weird thing to have to say. It's obvious what they value. They, they value some fucking store that got cleaned out by a bunch of random looters in another state, let alone another city. Mm. Like, they value that more than uh, just not, not, not only George Floyd's life. Yeah. Not, not only the fucking probably half a dozen other black people that have been killed since those protests started by police. I've already read at least two reports on other fucking um, black citizens being murdered during the protest Yeah, about cops murdering black people. Like, they, I don't know. I, I've lost track of how many fucking pictures I've seen of rioters and protesters and looters being arrested by a cop with their knee on their neck. Yeah. I've seen a picture of that in Columbia, my own town. <laughs> and and this is the fact that like there's there's people there to take pictures of it. There's people there to fucking record it. It it boggles my fucking mind about how long this must have been going on and how often it goes on. Yeah. Like I'm a big hairy white dude that can like that can accidentally slip into a southern accent. Yeah. I kind of get scared when I drive through rural Southern America. Because I know there's not going to be anybody there to do anything at all if a cop wants to fuck me up or to just trump up some fucking charges and arrest me. Because, you know, you know, you, you go to fucking, I don't know, with some random, you go to Gaston or some shit. You know, they don't have body cameras. They can't afford that. Yeah. Not the budget. Yeah. They, they, they can afford really fast fucking cars and AR-15s and, you know, the state-of-the-art Glocks. Yeah. And that's it. They can't afford anything else, you know, to, to, for any kind of accountability at all. They have one jail cell that they put everyone in, whether you're a rapist or whether you're drunk, you know. I can only imagine what African Americans and any kind of minority feels like when they drive through rural America. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah. It really is. And just just that thought alone is so like disconcerting is not a fucking good word for it, but and I know like we were talking on um um Mike Shea's uh basement lounge pod stream on Twitch the other day about this whole situation the other day, I think two or three days ago. Yeah. And like we're, we're, they were talking about racism and just like how it's just you know obviously how it's just still a thing, <laughs> yeah. And like how and why and what the fuck, 
Yeah, mind boggling that this is yeah. still a thing. And like, I, I I got shouted out on this fucking stream because like he um uh, Mike was sitting there on stream and like I just I just was talking with my friend who was raised in an incredibly racist household, mm-hmm. but he's not racist. And he, like, he was talking with me the other day about this. He's just like, I don't understand why I'm not racist. I was raised by a bunch of people that just are, and I just don't get it. And then I, I, you know, texted or I, I chatted in his uh, in his chat, just like if if you understood racism, then we would have a problem, right? Hmm. Like pe- people that aren't racist don't understand it. You shouldn't understand racism. Yeah. And if you do, then we have a problem. Because right. then somehow in your mind is justified. Yeah, I, I don't like. I, I understand the, the like their thoughts. They they think that they're lesser. Yeah, like you know, they think that they're less intelligent or less able for whatever fucking reason. I don't understand their reasoning behind that. And I think that anybody that does, I get, we we probably have a discussion to be had yeah. or get it the fuck out of my life, right? Mm. It's it's almost similar to this point. At least on my Facebook, people that are, like, I don't know, I, I lost track of how many people I have unfriended on my Facebook that have been saying like all lives matter and stuff. It's just ignorant. Yeah. Again, it's just cognitive distance. Uh, distance. Like, like like you said earlier, saying all lives matter during this bullshit. Like, obviously, all lives matter. No one's saying that. Yeah. For some reason, these people are just adding only. The Black Lives Matter. Yeah, uh, like they're, they're viewing it as only Black Lives yeah. Matter. No, those are just the ones that are under attack right now. There's a how there's a fucking Bible verse based around this shit. Yeah, the the one with Jesus um, looking after a flock of a hundred sheep. One of them went astray. He goes to leave to find it. The well, other what 99, about the other ninety nine? Like, well, that's not the one in danger right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, I actually had to use the argument on my friend the other day. And I say friend with the uh, the loosest of uh, meanings, but he was, he was talking to me about all lives matter, and I truly believe that he thinks all lives matter. He just doesn't understand, right? He's just ignorant as fuck. Yeah, and it's like yes, all lives matter. No one's saying they don't fucking matter except for pedophiles. Fuck pedophiles. All right, I'm done. But <laughs> I have friends who talk about that too, and I just try to point them into um, the music video about No Lives Matter. Uh, <laughs> I mean, on 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 the grand scheme of things, sure, but yeah, but that's we're not, not here. A conversation to ever be had. Yeah, we're no, not going to break into that one. <laughs> Five billion years from now, no one's going to exist. But I have there, to exist in the meantime. Yeah, I was going to say we're living in the Fair. now, though. <laughs> but yeah, for for all lives matter. What, what was that fucking meme going around? Like, it's like saying all houses matter to a firefighter who's trying to put out a house on fire. Like, yeah, but. The, all, of course, all houses, all do. houses matter. This one's on fire, though. <laughs> so, how about Trump's photo op at the church? Yeah, let's let's break into that fucking beautiful photo op, shall we? Literally, tiny orange man came out of his bunker, came out of the safety of his bunk. Jesus Christ, to. Tear gas and rubber bullet protesters out of his way to cross the street to a church he never goes to to hold up a book he's never read just for a photo op and to give a very shitty speech declaring basically war on his own citizens. Cool, cool. That's that's the nation we live in. Cool. You know, it wasn't just protesters that he kicked out. Oh, yeah, yeah, Sorry, it was actually, you know, um, priests. Yeah, the, the owner, or not the owner, but the, you know, the, the pastor for that church. Yeah. <laughs> what and, about freedom of religion? Is that a thing that we still have? I don't know. Do we have freedom? Is that a thing? <laughs> We're working our way in the opposite I, direction, I guess. Do you, you, you watch uh, Legal Eagle, right? The YouTube? Oh, know? of course. This guy went on to talk about that specifically for 20 minutes, made a video about it, cussed multiple times. This is an actual lawyer that lives in D.C. Yeah. It does, like, YouTube videos, just breaks down funny fucking movie clips about how many laws are broken, and just really, really fun stuff. (laughs) 
and he spent 20 minutes just shit talking Trump, shit talking this administration, and just cussing a lot in general. And he didn't really format the fucking video, but he did talk about several laws and specifically uh, amendments that were broken. Yeah. And like, clearly he's not as verse on like military law and stuff because I think at some point he asked uh, he, he asks um, military uh, personnel to you know just deny orders more or less to get, if it really fucking comes down to it mm. and so if you're in the military you take an oath to the constitution yeah not to the president you, if you get an unlawful or anti-constitutional order, you're actually obligated to deny it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. To, to uh, you, you know, just yeah, leave. There has actually <laughs> already less. been military personnel who have done that. Yeah, there have been National Guard that have laid down their arms. And, then, and there, there's also been, you know, uh, federal agents that have shot and tear gassed. Citizens and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Under and and that that's kind of the problem we're at. We're not. We were never really supposed to have a standing military. We we're supposed to have a militia in times of war. Mm-hmm. So the military we have right now, essentially, they're mercenaries. Like look up the definition of mercenary. They're paid for war. They're paid to learn the trade of war. And nothing else. You have career military men. And in yeah. times of peace and times of uh, fucking not distress, not a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Some of my best friends are career military. My dad was career military. But at the end of the day, looking at the definition of it and how the founding fathers framed the Constitution and how the country is supposed to fucking move throughout, career military men are ultimately mercenaries. Yeah. <laughs> by every definition of the word. And I think a lot of them will still obey orders from the president. Because that's where they get their paycheck from. Yeah. The Constitution doesn't pay them. What a scary, shitty world we live <laughs> in. Yeah, I guess, you know, time makes fools of us all. Thank God for the second of it. <laughs> you think that matters if it came down to fighting half the military? Oh, no, I'd die. It's a. They already bombed cities during um, the civil rights in the sixties. Yep, because they they thought that there was a like a Black Panther or just a big like militant civil rights group in a specific neighborhood, and they fucking carpet bombed that neighborhood. Oh my 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 one my one gun could probably take out one military officer. And then all 800 other ones would destroy me and everyone else around me because nobody else has a gun around me. You think you would get an officer? That's no. shooting pretty high. I, I apologize if I said officer. <laughs> I'm a little drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the one guy in the front. <laughs> I mean, the pawn. You'd hit their medic by accident, you piece of shit. Luckily, oh. I, 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 <laughs> I truly believe about half the military wouldn't um, obey orders and they would, you know, Organize, yeah, and there there would be essentially a, a revolution uh, similar to the, the similar to the, uh, the South side of the Civil War. And if you, if you look into that, like ignoring why they were fighting, there were some damn good revolutionary fucking tactics in that, just guerrilla warfare mm-hmm. used for or perfected, I should say, because it was used during the Revolutionary War for the first time, really. Yeah, Revolutionary War was in really, um, I guess. Our type of people, like really refined guerrilla yeah. warfare for ourselves. So, yeah, if, if you spread out, you're like, there's a whole talk to be had on that, but with enough forces and enough spread out, but with still viable organization and communication, it's possible to take this country back because they just won't have anywhere to stay. Yeah. Right? They'll just be living in bunkers, you mm. know, and, and ordering airstrikes on where they think large populations of. Um, Rebels are turning into fucking Star Wars real quick up in this bitch. Well, that that brings us into the uh, the Boogaloo Boys. 
Yeah, let's uh, let's talk on them because I'm kind of offended. Not necessarily. You know, we'll, we'll get into that. The fact that all right, I'm a big guy. I've been a big guy most of my life. I spent middle school and high school. Hawaiian shirts were my thing. That was my fashion. And I feel like it's being taken away from me because I still wear some Hawaiian shirts to this day. One of my favorite shirts is a pink shirt with lobsters on it. I love that shit. Hell yeah, I love that shirt. <laughs> and right now, I feel I, I, I genuinely, it's a real thought that's crossed my mind. Like, huh, should I wear this today? No, you'll probably be labeled racist. Yeah. What the fuck? First they take Nordic runes and now they took my Hawaiian shirts. What the fuck else? <laughs> I've been wearing Hawaiian shirts ever since I started watching MASH when I was in diapers, <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, simpler times, to be sure. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah so that, that's the first thing that kind of irritates me about that. Let's, let's break into exactly what what is this, uh, this boogaloo movement. Oh, hurry up, I want my fucking drink. Jesus Christ, Draco. Um... So I did a little bit of research into it, and I've, I've heard about them, obviously. I think most people that have guns have probably heard about them. Yeah. And also, I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment. I have several guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, Boo Boys, and they're, uh, they're, they're started, like, over ten years ago. Some, somewhere on 4chan. As of just course. Gun enthusiasts. <laughs> Fucking 4chan. Yeah. Weird. Somewhere on 4chan, they end up getting organized... And they made their way to like Tumblr and Facebook, and there, there's been several like I, I, I don't know too in depth, but all the admins and all their different groups have always had the same rules. Mm. I would say for the groups, no talks about politics at all. No, no talk about um, uh, right wing, left wing, uh, liberals, conservatives, progressives, anything going on like that. Literally, they're just there to talk about guns. Yeah, and their guns. I eventually, it kind of shifted into uh, preparing for a uh, civil war. Mm-hmm. No one asked me how, but that's what happened, and that's essentially what they are. It's just a bunch of people preparing for a civil war, for whatever reason. And when you get a lot of people behind one cause. And they're essentially allowed to come up with their own reason to get behind that cause. You're gonna have a shitload of different kinds of people from all kinds of walks of life. Yeah, you so, get extremists on both sides of that. Yeah, you, very true. You you got people that legitimately want a civil war to start because they want to kill American citizens and shit. Yeah, and you got incredibly uh, right wing uh, extremists. You have racists. You have uh, people that are just incredibly xenophobic. And then you got people that just like guns, also in the group. You you get you got people in the group that just have one gun and want to know more about it, <laughs> yeah, or know more about other guns. So what what I'm hearing is like a lot of the Hawaiian shirts out there. You got both people who are trying to start something and other people who are trying to defend something. Yeah, and it, it's kind of mm-hmm. hard to tell. Like um, when we were at the protest on Saturday, we actually ran into a few of them. And Vaughn actually knew a couple of them personally. We actually talked with them. And they were just there to protect, for the, actually the same reason we were there. Yeah. They were there to protect peaceful protesters from anybody that would do them harm. And the, as far as like the, the media went, it actually escalated at that point. You can see in our local news, like they're looking for people with Hawaiian shirts for yeah. inciting rioting. Yeah, I, I, we were there when shit hit the fan, and the the people the the Bulu boys, <laughs> Bulu just, boys. just fun to fucking say in all in, in seriousness. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here talking about systemic racism and people getting tear gassed and shot while having to keep using the term Bulu boys. Yep, <laughs> it's it's hard. <sighs> Mm -mm. It's just hard to say that with a straight face every time. But they they get blamed for agitating and instigating it. We were there. They didn't instigate shit. Yeah, they were next to us majority of the time. Yeah. Now, not, not, not to say we didn't see every single person at the protest. Maybe there were other dudes in Hawaiian shirts that did cause some shit. 
But the dudes and, that... And I'm sure they have in other cities. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's been there, I'm sure. But our direct experience with those particular guys, they didn't start shit. Yeah, no, there were, we, we, we were there at the protest. By the time shit hit the fan, there was, what, 50, 75 people there? Yeah. There was three guys there with Hawaiian shirts on. I mean... I, I know they didn't start shit and they didn't agitate shit, but I never saw a single one of them throw anything. It's hard to defend them because they're so infiltrated. Yeah, exactly. Like they're fucking everywhere and they're on both sides. If if, if you just picked one, uh, like if, if you took all Boogaloo boys and set them down and you just grabbed one and got his entire fucking life story, it's probably racist. It's a good chance of it. Yeah. He, he's probably, you know, a, uh, anti-Black Lives Matter. He probably, like, he I, I wouldn't say he probably wants a civil war, but he wouldn't be mad if it started. Yeah. You know, he, he wouldn't be upset if one started. He'd be down to clown. Yeah, probably. And and that, at that point, it's kind of hard to defend them. And there are some incredible, just genuine people in the group. People that understandably want to prepare, uh, prepare for something. But you you can also, you can say that with just about anybody in any group. If you pick somebody out of the protesters, there's probably somebody there that you picked out that is ready to throw something at the cops and try to start a riot. Yeah, but you're, you're at that point you're talking about a minority versus almost a majority, okay. you know? Yeah. All right, I'll give you that. Like, <laughs> the equivalent of grabbing a KKK member. You're racist? Yeah. Odds are good. Odds are pretty good that they're racist. I get you. Know? That's what you're saying. I get you. And they're not on that level. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Not not at that level, but that was... You over-exaggerated yeah. the proof point. Yeah. I mean, I you, you could go in almost any group. And I actually had this conversation with one of my uh, moderate uh, conservative friends. Earlier. You can go in almost any group and say... Some of them are very fine people. Except for Nazis. <laughs> very fine people. Yeah. Except for Nazis. Mm-hmm. Except for Klansmen. Somehow that, like, even if that's the only line, somehow people still try to argue that line. Yeah. Oh, no. Go into that, any public forum forum and literally say Nazis are bad. You're going to get backlash. Yeah. Didn't I'm we getting have, flack on that. Yeah, it's weird. Didn't we have a war about that or something? I don't, I don't know. My my, my yeah. knowledge of history is a little Dude, vague, but... I swear to God, going to any public forum, do, do like maybe, maybe if it was about six times, Nazis are bad, I guarantee you're going to get flack on it. And you know who to ignore. From, from, not, not, not from people saying, hey, I'm a Nazi and I disagree. It's going to be from people <laughs> saying like, oh yeah, Nazis are bad, but... Well, everything before the word they, bud is they, bullshit. They, yeah. So. Everything after the word bud is bullshit. Both yeah. sides of it. Really, if the word bud is used, just ignore what they're going to say. Yeah, Nazis are bad, but... Actually, no, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, yeah. No, I mean, I've heard it both ways. Yeah, I, I get that kind of shit. I, I posted on a fucking friend's page the other day who was talking shit about the... They said, said the whole uh, very fine people on both sides. is. He said it's nonsense. I'm like, I disagree with that. And I didn't say that. I literally just said, um, yeah, you, what I said earlier, yeah, you could pick up almost any group of people and say there's very fine people on both sides, except for Nazis. And I got flack from three people on that. That's all I said. Fuck them. But like, once you start talking about genocide and, and uh, racism and shit, yeah, now your your belief, your First Amendment rights you, don't matter. Yeah, you don't have any credibility See, at that point. I, I am shocked about that. Probably about as shocked as you were when you said that and then got flat. No, no, I, I, this has happened to me for years because okay. I'm not you I, know, opposed to confrontation over the internet. Well, I, I'm, not that I'm opposed to it, but I've never had anybody come. I've never gotten flagged for saying Nazis are bad. Granted, I can't say how many times I've said Nazis are bad. Hopefully, at least once. At least once. Okay. In a public but, forum. Probably. I would hope so. I don't know. I don't keep track of the times I say Nazis are bad. It's just a given. The majority of the time, it's usually people saying, like, yeah, no, totally, Nazis suck. They're a shit stain on humanity. But communists suck, too. And you're like, well, that, that's not that's not the point. I'm like, hey! 
<laughs> this guy's a commie over here. Fuck this guy. Like, Some shit like that. And I think, oh, you, you want to talk shit about Nazis, but you don't want to talk shit about commies? The the, the red menace? The Antifa? Not. Like how fucking shitty they are? And I know like, I want to talk shit about how, how bad Nazis are. Like, oh, fuck you, man. You're, you're, you're down with the... The mass murder that communists have been committing for the last 500 years. I'm like, nah, man, I'm just, just saying Nazis are bad. Try, trying to make a point about Nazis here. Not the point. Na- Nazi, oh. Nazis suck. It's like, oh, this guy's com- communist. Like, well, okay. I think that's a, a, a great segue into the fact that literally um, Trump declared uh, Antifa are terrorists now. Yep, domestic terrorists. Yep, and they're... there's not a law on that. There is not. Um, for those I'm of you not who, sure he can actually do that. Well, for those of you who don't know, anti-fair or anti-fa, it's anti-fascism. Yeah. But that's Being, not how people see it anymore, right? For some reason, it's been misconstrued. But still, anti, anti-fa is not an organization. It's a mindset. It's a philosophy. You're literally against fascism. Yeah. And but that's now seen as being a domestic terrorist. Somehow. And it's kind of like Black Lives Matters, from from the arguments that I've had from you know racist people and like extremist far right people and even some fucking moderate conservatives. They're seeing Black Lives Matter and Antifa as organizations. Yeah. Where where there's like like you're, like you're a paid member, right? You you have T-shirts and you you meet on Tuesdays. This kind of shit. No, it's not a fucking book club. <laughs> it's not a club. It's it's not a group. It's a philosophy. It's a, it's an idea. You can't kill an idea. Ideas, Mister Greedy. <laughs> Government should fear their people. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> segue yeah. away from that. Being against fascism is terrorism. Mm. He declared an idea. Terrorism. How was that not textbook thought crime? Hmm. Uh, read 1984. Yeah. Shout out to anybody that's ever read 1984, watched V for Vendetta, maybe, I don't know, Children of Any dystopian future, really. Fahrenheit 451. Yeah, let's go <laughs> break into all those. Um, so, yeah, that's a weird thing that's going on right now, too, coming out of the tangerine's mouth. The angry carrot. <laughs> yeah. So what's all right? Let's um another talking point. Mussolini, if he was a Cheeto. <laughs> Cheeto dust, Mussolini. Nice. Wow. Anyway, there. Um, I, I will say that I am. Are you against fascism? I believe I am against fascism. This guy just admitted to terrorism. He's a terrorist. Get him. Whoa, 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 buddy. Yes. <laughs> I guess <laughs> this is a thing. So this is literally what Trump said, right? <laughs> did, did you watch it? Are, are y'all keyed in? Y'all clued in any of this? I are you living in your little bubble? I've been avoiding Facebook. <laughs> what does that tell you? On that note, I feel like that's a great thing to bring up as far as like sit, sitting back. What does that tell me? Well, I won't say about you in particular, but <laughs> um, keeping in mind. For, for those people who um, are abstaining from having a side, as far as this goes, by the way, the, that old saying of remaining silent only helps the oppressor. So Not making a decision is a big decision, Rick. <laughs> I, again, I've agreed with mostly what, what all of you guys said. I've not really had a disagreement with anything, but I just, I've been avoiding Facebook because after a while it's just like... There's only so much I can physically do by myself, mm. so it's like there's no point in just continuing getting angry. Yeah, so I disagree with that. Avoid it for the moment. But I, again, I, I have been talking with people. I've been talking with my coworkers. I've been talking with him about it. When I re-update, he's been willing to give back to me. I just there's no point in arguing with friends because I happen to say something that they disagree with. Because I have friends who don't always agree with me. What if twenty people have that mindset? I don't have 20 friends who think that way. <laughs> How do you know? Because all of my friends agree with you. and I agree Every with you. single one of them? All of the friends that have come out and spoken about it agree with you. 
And I agree What about the you. ones that haven't come out and spoken about it? Then they're the problem and they will refuse to voice their opinion because they're avoiding the have issue. Have you come out and spoke about it? I have with coworkers and I have with him. I have with him actually. I work at a grocery store and I have talked to customers about it, about protesting because they've mentioned they've gone to the protest. Or they've mentioned something that's going on in the news. How about your other friends on Facebook? How do you know they haven't been doing that as well? Because everyone I've talked to that I know usually avoid the subject. It's like, no, I'm just going to avoid it. It's just easier if I don't say anything. Yeah, so you get multiple people doing that. Multiple people with a mindset of saying, you know, one person's not going to make a difference. Because most people was raised to believe that you don't discuss religion and politics, especially in mixed company. I mean, I, I don't disagree. A lot of people have the mindset one person's not going to make a difference. And that's the problem. Yeah, because... So many people have that mentality. It ends up being a lot of people. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's uh, one of the things that a lot of the, a lot of the community needs to get out of is, you know, there's so many things going on with politics in the world that it's hard to say on certain occasions which ones I need to stay out of and which ones I need to get more involved in, and so when you. When you want to stay out of it, and you've been doing it for so long, it can it can really take a toll on you when you actually need to be a part, but you're so used to wanting to stay out. I mean, I guess on some level I understand that, but at the same time, I don't feel like this is one of those like things to stay out of. No, I, I, I agree. I yeah, agree. but but there are. Well, there are a lot of points where, you know, as she's saying, she's been yet, she's been staying off social media because of it. Oh, no, no, I can, I can agree been, with staying she's off. she's still been talking to, you know, people in general. Yeah. There are a lot more people who are agreeing and still on the, on the, the side of Black Lives Matter that are going, I don't want confrontation at all. I'm just hiding yeah. in their own shell. Mm-hmm. So, that that which is note, the fault of social media in the first place, I think. Yeah. People aren't used to face to face confrontation at all. Yeah. They, they want they want hours to come up with a response and come up with their talking points. And if they don't have that kind of luxury, they're not going to have a conversation. Yeah, they don't person. want to be put on the spot for it. Yeah. And that's all of a conversation as well. And uh, definitely on some level, I can see um, staying off social media because I'll be damned if this year social media in general just will wear. On your fucking psyche. Yeah. It, it, it is exhausting to be on social media these days. It is. But... Especially if you, if you're, politics. If you're on social media, kind of like how, how we opened this podcast up, mm-hmm. if you're on social media at all, you have a platform. Yeah. You have at least some kind of platform. And, and as we said, if you have a platform, you have somewhat of an obligation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's why we're here right now. We're talking about it. What was one of the one of the things people were uh, were shouting at a protest? White silence is violence. It's essentially being complacent and everything. If you're not speaking up, yeah, it comes down to the whole being silent just helps the oppressor. Yeah, it doesn't help the person being oppressed to stay indifferent. And it never will. Yeah, and I think that's something that a lot of our celebrities right now agree with. Yes, indeed. That that is all right. We we've had something very what's what's the word inspirational almost come out of it. Like I am happy to see so many big figures standing up for this because they have far bigger a platform than any of us will ever have. So them taking a stance is a big message. And even, um, I don't know, I feel like there's there's a misconstrued, like, people look down a bit on, like, social media celebrities as far as, like, Instagrammers and fucking YouTubers and whatnot, but them standing up as well, like, since big, you have genuine celebrities, movie stars, um, musicians, a- actors, and then you also have social media influencers standing up, and it all is just sending a big message, and it's it kind of heartwarming. Yo, you wouldn't believe the fucking smile I got on my face when I saw that Norman Reedus was in the thick of it with all the fucking protesters. Yep, the boondock yeah. saint himself. <laughs> that, that, I got the biggest fucking smile on my face that I've had in weeks. Like, that was so legit, like... And, like, I, I, I smiled a little bit when I saw, like, Halsey was out there as, like, a fucking medic. 
you know, just doing God's work out there. Jamie <laughs> Foxx and John Boyega, fucking dozens of other celebrities, yeah. just killing it. And I know The Rock uh, uh, tweeted a response to to Trump and his actions and <laughs> support of Black Lives Matter. Yeah, and it's that kind that kind of sounded hypocritical to me a bit. Because the the McMahon Foundation is one of the biggest donate de- donators to the Trump uh, campaign, and just Trump in general. I mean, I wouldn't hold a man to his previous employer. He still supports WWE, though. It was a big portion of his life, I guess. So. And, and his daughter just joined WWE as well. So. Really? Yeah, Vince McMahon also stated that WWE doesn't stand for his personal views. But they do, and you can't escape that. I agree, but I'm just saying. <laughs> like you, again, you, if you have a platform, you have a responsibility. Sure. Everything you do and say res, uh, you know, reflects you know, everything that you've built and created and are, and are in charge of. Actually, that, that makes me think very heavily on... Um, there, there was actually a big thing that, that blew up recently of uh, basically an, an owner of multiple restaurant franchises. He had donated a very large amount, like almost a, almost a half... What, uh... Half million to uh, to the Trump like administration. Oh yeah. Well, it's talking about like um, uh, Wendy's, McDonald's, all kinds of shit oh, like that. Yeah, yeah. That he was part of, and then you legitimately had like the true CEO of Wendy's. I like, can't wait to see what Taco Bell and Wendy's does <laughs> with with those board members that have been donating to uh, Trump and yeah. support or don't don't support Black Lives Matter. Well, I was talking about uh, with with Vorn actually looking at um, the uh, we, we were referencing the old movie Demolition Man, Sylvester Stallone, and Wesley <laughs> like Snipes. Taco Bell owns oh everything. Yeah, Taco Bell yeah. is every restaurant. And I was yeah. thinking about that, like, huh, this is going to end up being some kind of franchise war. Like, we're going to have our weird ass dystopian future, and there's like, there's only going to be what like, calls it. Yeah, yeah. And this is like legitimately, we're we're just like it's only going to have Wendy's, Wendy's or Taco Bell. Yeah, or both, <laughs> or. Somebody that didn't support Trump in the first place. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and didn't have to distance themselves. Well, no. going off of food, I'm really hoping it's Taco Bell. It's probably going to be Popeyes. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you don't like Popeyes? Not as much as Taco Bell. I love Taco Bell. There are many other Mexican. Oh, wait, not anymore after that. Taco Bell has like one good food item. I'm saying it right They're there. all the same item. We're not staring away from any kind of controversial <laughs> topic. <laughs> no more controversial. <laughs> Taco Bell is trash, except for the Crunchwrap Supreme. Burn in hell! All right, every item on their menu could be rearranged into the Crunchwrap Supreme. It doesn't matter. I would kill myself if I could only drink Baja Blast for the rest of my life. <laughs> Baja Blast is trash. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get into their one bad trick. Okay. It's their thing. I Because <laughs> it's disgusting. All right. I can agree Have you that. ever actually taken the last bite from a beefy five layer burrito and felt good about yourself? I'm, dep- I'm yes. I'm bullshit. Yes. You're lying to yourself. Yes. What do I order? You're lying every to me. To to Taco Bell. Two beefy five layer burritos, no sour cream. Well, that's okay. why I fucking love them. Jake, stop lying to yourself. <laughs> it's so delicious. I Arr! believe you believe. You're telling the truth. I but, believe you hope that I'm lying, but you're wrong. Why do I care if you're lying or not? Because you're friends with me. And therefore yes, and I yourself. want you to be a better person. Well, you're going <laughs> to fail at that. The first... <laughs> okay, babe, you asked me where do I want to eat. What's my first answer? I don't care. I want a fucking five-layer burrito. <laughs> I want Taco Bell. You're both you, wrong. And you, you have every right to believe that. As somebody who is at least partially Mexican, I'm offended. She's part Spanish. My last name is Lopez. I'm even more offended then. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. No, no, I'm cutting Peru, it right there. Edit no, it out. No, no. <laughs> Peru Mexican is far better than Taco Bell any goddamn day of the week. Because Taco Bell isn't Mexican food. It's no, it's not. It's an American version of what mm. they think is taco, mm. which is not. <laughs> but if I had to choose between any fast food chain and Taco Bell, I would probably pick Taco Bell. Gross. Fast food chain, not actual restaurant. I'm going to go with five guys. They're not fast food. They are. No, no, they're not. I can get the food fast. It's not fast food. Okay. It's like saying Smash Burgers fast food. It's like, not. really? <laughs> not a burger and fry joint is considered fast food. They're not franchised, though. 
Is that the defining and factor to, now? To the level, like when, when when you talk about fast food, you know what people are talking about, right? Mm. Is Zoe's Kitchen fast food? No, never eaten there. Don't know. It's not though. It's not. <laughs> It's not fast food. It's Is Five Guys food. fast food? Yes. No, Boom. It's not. You're wrong. It's not. You want him to be wrong. But you're wrong. I'm not. I don't want to say it's fast food. Why? Because every time I go in there, they treat it like it's a fast food restaurant. Go in there, get your shit, get out. That is a good point, but can it be established by most of the world that it's fast food? Probably, yeah. As far as I can tell. I've never been to a Five Guys drive through do they have those? No. Probably somewhere. But I, I think that know. has to be a qualifying fucking Is that? thing. Yeah. Okay. If it's a qualifying if it, thing, if, I'll if, give it to you. Yeah. Unless it's in a mall, I think it has to have a drive-thru. <laughs> yes, it's fast I agree. food. Okay, all right. If that is a qualifying factor, then no, they're not. Yeah, I mean, that, that it's so fast been, food, right? I've you shouldn't have to get out of your car to get fast food. I've well, there, there are Chinese food. places with drive-thru, though. That's not fast food. That's not fast food. But they have a drive-thru. But not all of them. I've, They're not I've franchised. never been to a Chinese place. They're Chinese brilliant. place and ordered Chinese and been there for twelve seconds and got my food and left. Also, most Chinese restaurants that I go to don't have uh, drive-throughs. Yeah, I've never. It's, it's not a big thing drive-thru. here in the South. The Peking Walk has one. I don't think it's ever been used before, though. No, I don't think it has. <laughs> Anyway, I feel like we're getting a little off topic here. We broke no, no, this is important. We need to finish this discussion. <laughs> we broke into right. restaurant talk. We need to be talking about what's important. Fair. Five guys. Wendy's. <laughs> well, the, Best the, fast food. The legitimate like CEO of the Wendy's Corporation, like they, they came out and said, like, nah, f- fuck that. We're, we're down with Black Lives Matter. Yeah, fuck not that. only do they have the best fast food. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna let this go. It's not debatable, but <laughs> they they have the best Twitter outside of maybe Carrot Facts. All right, that Carrot I'll Facts is you, pretty good. I will give you that. They have a better Twitter, but their food does not compare to Taco Bell. It does it no, crushes it Taco Bell? I don't. You know, like Brian's just gonna cut all. I, I was gonna say I'm gonna go ahead and edit this out. <laughs> I don't like breakfast no. burritos at all. Well, and I went to Taco Bell, and their breakfast burritos are trash. Are fucking amazing. No, no, they're trash. Their, their breakfast burritos are good. No, as <laughs> food for man who it's doesn't good. no what who doesn't want to say the Taco Bell win and is saying that the breakfast burritos Taco are good. Bell wins nothing. Okay, thank you. First off, <laughs> their breakfast burritos not bad compared to everything else on their menu. <laughs> no, it's a very low bar. Let him this finish is why I didn't let him finish. <laughs> it's okay. Against again the Crunchy Wrap Supreme. Crunchy Wrap. Crunchy Wrap. That ranks in the top like ten best fast food items of all time. Okay. Everything else Taco Bell serves is delicious. It's <laughs> like delicious. it's the bottom fifty. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take anything else from any other fast food restaurant. Before literally anything on the Taco Bell menu. You see, nope. Well, this has been a fun is, conversation. Because I really wish that I could fight you harder on this. But you know you can't. Was it <laughs> Wendy's? Because as a burger joint, I love Wendy's. You know why? Because Wendy's is fucking great. Because they're the best. I was talking to me, like Hardee's has like the best burgers. And I think we can all agree on that. What if Wendy's and Taco Bell. I would take rushes over them any day. Then we have Demolition Man. We'd have, the, we'd, we'd have the best Twitter, and we'd have the best fast food, and the Crunchwrap Supreme. And right. we came full circle, right? <laughs> yep, we came full circle. All right, well, let's 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 go into our next uh, topic. How will these protests affect the coronavirus? Yes, that that actually is a big we're factor. We're all gonna die. I think we can wrap that up really quickly, and it's going to spread, and we're gonna have a peak again. Yeah, and weird. no one's gonna give a shit. Who yeah. knew? There, there has been some misinformation that I've seen uh, spread as far as it goes. People are saying that the protests have led to a uh, 21,000 case spike as far as the coronavirus. Because all these protesters are out there getting tested for coronavirus. Yeah, I feel like they've got some other right. things that they're kind of working on right now. I don't feel like they're getting tested at the moment. Yeah, burning down Adidas stores. <laughs> Probably not wrong. but Not sponsored. <laughs> Never will be. Because we don't care about money here, I guess. But. Uh, maybe Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's. <laughs> we're down. Then we do. 
<laughs> Let it go. Anyway. <laughs> but no, you think about it. It's got um, a- at least a two to 14 day incubation period. What was about two weeks ago? Oh, well, even even like within the halfway mark of that, you got Memorial Day weekend. Weird. We saw those all the pictures, yeah. like huge influx of people on beaches and whatnot. Then all of a sudden, within the incubation period, we've got twenty one thousand more cases. But yes, it was the riots. Yeah, no, there there was the the protests for all of the um, oh yeah uh, right wing nuts that wanted haircuts that marched on state capitals with their fucking you know semi-automatic assault rifles <laughs> hey, which hey. I, I shouldn't say like assault rifle is not a fair word i'm a gun enthusiast uh armor light rifle sorry and hey, hey. i noticed Where's they didn't the president those were good people they were trying to very fine them. people and they did yeah. not get tear gas the, the, or the mayor should have fucking brought them in and talked to them and made a deal yeah that's what that's what yeah. the mayor should have done right it's all on the governor's fault. But these people, right now, they're thugs. Yeah. And they need to be murdered by the militarized no, police. Not murdered. Dominate. Right, no, they need to be suicided. You're right. <laughs> oh, we're getting bitter. <laughs> anyway. Getting. We're getting more yeah. bitter. Okay. Have we no. already reached that point? No, we've legitimately gone full circle. Because we've legitimately gone to the point... We got to the point when we were around you know, about ten years ago. We were like twenty, twenty-one, and we're sitting there and like, you know, I, I believe in people. Uh, you know, I believe in humanity. Hell yeah! Still had some we, hope. Nope. We we can make a change. Oh my sweet summer child. Yes. <laughs> really? Well, that's where we're at now, though, right? I, I guess in a way, yeah. We think we can make a change because about five years uh, ago, and we just stopped giving a shit. We were no lives matter. Yeah. yeah actually, yeah. We, yeah. we didn't give a fuck about anyone or anything. And granted, we were in probably our tightest echo chamber. True. At true. that time, we were all very self-centered. <laughs> didn't give a single fuck about what was happening outside of our specific little bubble. Well, I, I guess that's a thing as far as, 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 as far as this goes. Because, like, yeah, in a way, this has increased how shitty I view humanity just on like the the actual violence and brutality side of things but it's also brought back some kind of faith to see so many people rising up for yeah. a cause that's worthwhile we're very close to critical mass on actually making a change yeah you know every single something I didn't expect to see in my lifetime yeah every this is the biggest civil rights movement of all time yeah and there's not if there isn't a change that majority of people see as suitable, I believe there will actually be some sort of civil war or revolution. Yeah, scary thought. But, it was very scary. And, well, I mean that—that's why the the Civil Rights Act was was put forward because if they didn't change something, there was going to be a revolution. Yeah, there there was going to be like because the next step, if nothing changes, then the next step is one of two things: either. Everything dies down and everything goes back to the status quo. Or there's a revolution. Yeah. And that's why shit changes because the government wants everybody to go back and it would do the bare minimum. Yeah. <laughs> to mm-hmm. make sure that happens. You know? And, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're approaching that point. I think we're approaching that critical mass. Dangerous times, though, because this government's fucking crazy. Yep. <laughs> And they just might double down on their uh, on their bullshit. Is it like what? What I need to see what fucking Congress is saying about anything, if anything, right now. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Congress, the way things have been going over the past several years, I feel like Congress is on the Black Lives Matter. We need change, and the Senate is on the. Whoa, calm down. You're a bunch of terrorists. Everybody needs to just stop and listen to the police. Yeah. Well, it's a difficult thing, too. And I, I that's why I think there's a possibility for revolution, why there's a possibility for civil war. Because women's suffrage and, and um, um, civil rights, it's an actual thing to mm-hmm. argue for, for equality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. When, when you say, like, I, I want to vote, <laughs> you know, I, I want to not 
legally be discriminated against because of the color of my skin. That's an actual thing to fight for and an actual thing to say, change this. When you walk up to the fucking governor and say, stop murdering us, that's a hard thing to legislate, right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> like, like, all right, we'll put a law in that says if you murder someone, they'll be a- a- re- arrested. Then. Consequences. <laughs> there will be consequences. Oh, wait, that's already yeah. there. Yeah, Dang. I, if, if, if you were Congress, how would you sit down and legislate, you know, cop? protocol right, yeah exactly i i can't even begin to fucking fathom what it's going to take like they, they already put body cams in where it's it's supposedly supposed to be a crime to turn that off it's, it's legitimately destroying evidence yeah but when people aren't the murdering hasn't stopped yeah apparently murdering someone with your own personal footage of you doing the act isn't enough to stop it yeah, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know where we need to it's, go from it's, here. It's, it's a reasonable thing to argue for. Stop murdering people. It, but that's been legislated. Yeah. Like, obviously, you want justice. Like, how, how many cover-ups have there already tried to be? How, how many cover-ups have there already been just since the protest started? <laughs> like... How, how much bullshit have caught, like, and, and like, if, if you get power, if you got people that, that are just given power, it's going to be abused. That's a fact. It's just a fact you were never going to get away with. Yeah, there, there, there was even an experiment done behind that. What was it again? Yeah, the, the Stanford prison experiment. Stanford prison, yeah. where they had college students take the place of prison guards, and they, like, it was shown they, they yeah. honestly went within mad. Yeah, within, they went mad with power immediately. Yeah. So, what's say a fucking, you know, straight C student who became a cop. Yeah. Wouldn't you say. get 450 hours of training, you know, through, uh, well, a, a hold, quarter of that to become a barber, I think. Hold, hold on now, Joey. 480 hours. Ooh. In some cities. <laughs> In some cities. And then literally four <laughs> times that to become a fucking barber, yes. Yeah. And you, you can literally gun people down in the street. And before those body cameras and just widespread fucking... Phones everywhere. You could literally gun someone down in the fucking street and get away with it. Yeah. So to wrap up, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. like to uh, do these podcasts now where we start on a positive note, some sort of SCA story and stuff that we, we enjoy. I'd like to end it on a positive note as, as well. As difficult as that may be during our current times, yes. Ending on a positive note sounds uh, fantastic. My, my friend posted this earlier on Facebook. Okay. Welcome to protesting. Choose your class. <laughs> okay. All right. So, fighter, you march in demonstrations. All right. Tank, you put your body between the vulnerable and cops' attacks. Okay. Okay. Rogue, you flood snitch lines with false reports <laughs> and K-pop face cams. I don't. Don't forget you. Uh, you also throw in a little fucking fuck the police on their police scanners. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anonymous stuff. Uh, uh, healer. You provide medical support and supplies to protesters. All right, all right. Typical. Simple. Right. Bard, you spread the word and help members of the other classes keep up their spirits and mental health. Morale you boost, know, I like it. moral support. Uh, chemist, provide food and needed supplies to communities targeted by police and agitators. All right. Wizard, use your technical skills and platform to help keep lines of communication going and inform people. A point of me. <laughs> and support caster. Keep your allies strong by donating money and or time to bail funds and protest organizations. And you see that I have done, so I'll take that one. <laughs> I think I'm a fighter that's multi-classed in a tank recently. Yeah. I've never had a body shield for anybody before in any of the other protests I've ever been to. I'd probably be. But, that, that's a weird thought to have to have, but it's just, it's legitimately relevant. I mean, if you want to be an ally, you got to take some fucking rubber bullets, I guess. I think I've been, I've been more on the bard scale, you know, keeping other people's spirits up, you know. You're doing a good job for getting out there. Do what you got to do. I don't know, man. You depress me every time you're around, so. Yeah, well, that's because you have to look at my face and talk to people on the phone. Hey, uh. you got a pretty face, just a shitty personality. Don't make me come <laughs> over there. Yeah. I like my face. I, I was trying to not. end I this. I said you had a good face. I was trying to end this podcast no, no, um, <laughs> on a positive note. You just shit talk Draco <laughs> for like 
30 seconds hey, straight. I love Draco. Prove it. Kiss. Kiss. <laughs> kiss. Don't make me cry. Kiss. 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 Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> My face. Uh. It's okay. It's not the first time they've been. <laughs> um, yeah, I do want to cover her up. This is the face of Anonymous. <laughs> You fuck up my shades, my fifteen dollars shades. <laughs> I, I do want to talk about the fact that it is staggering how like this whole thing just summoned the civil rights Avengers. Like mm. you, you got literally the Amish and witches on the same side protesting. Amish still have the burn the witch mentality, by the way. They're on the same side. Not a good side. Anonymous came out of the world. He's been like silent for like three years. He came out, started doing work. You're talking about like uh, about anonymous, like it's one person. Again, it's an idea. All right, whatever. They. <laughs> it. Hey, whoa! I'm trying to go with proper pronouns here, and you're calling it it. It's an idea. No, it is a clown. <sighs> Capital <laughs> it. <laughs> and also, it's uh, Pennywise. Yes. Right. It's not its name. It's a, it's a demigod. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> straying away from that. The dead lights. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'm I'm happy to see like how many figures rallied around this. I think that's a positive point to end on. Also, Norman Reedus. Yeah, Nor. I mean, in the protest, the Boondock Saints are here, baby. Let's go. I'm pretty sure fucking like Emma Watson and you know. Uh, or, or or Kristen Stewart was there. One of them. I don't know. They're basically interchangeable. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, on that note. If you're not down with that. No. <laughs> Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. And, and if, if you're, you're not, not down, down with that, that. You can suck it. You can suck it. <laughs> and if they're not down with that. Well, if they're not down with that. Then, of course, they can suck it. Uh, this yeah. is- <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, this has been an extra long Two Whiskeys podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.